hi, I'm Anita Perez, and as many of you know, all my life I've been fascinated by history and the arts, and have been a strong believer in social justice. I also have a birthday coming up in the very near future, and I'm sure as most of you realize, such events make a person very aware of the passage of time. For this and various other reasons, I've decided to begin a series of video casts concerning persons, writings, cultural achievements, and events in history that relate to the spread of knowledge, spiritual aspiration, the struggle toward freedom, and the pursuit of social justice. I would like to dedicate this series to Garrison Keillor out of respect and admiration for his work on the Writer's Almanac, which has been a source of inspiration for me for some years. I will call this a metaphysician's journal, and I will not be doing this every day, but once or twice a week, hopefully. Watch for it. I promise to make it interesting. This will not be about the usual events and people that everyone else discusses. Today, or on this day, in 1642, at age 77, Galileo Galilei, the famous astronomer, died while under house arrest by the Inquisition. He is considered to be the father of modern science, and was the first known person to use a telescope. He discovered four of the moons of Jupiter, the rings of Saturn, solar rotation, and was the first person to confirm that the Earth orbits the Sun. And on this day in 1790, George Washington delivered the first State of the Union Address in New York City. He argued for a more organized approach to domestic issues of the day and outlined planned policies of his administration. On January 8th of 1815, the British started the Battle of New Orleans, hoping that by capturing the city they could separate Louisiana from the rest of the United States. However, pirate Jean Lafitte warned the Americans of the attack, and the arriving British found militiamen under General Andrew Jackson strongly entrenched at the Rodriguez Canal. They were unable to penetrate American defenses and were trounced in less than an hour. It was the last armed engagement between the U.S. and Britain. And on this day in 1877, Crazy Horse fought his last battle against U.S. Army forces at Wolf Mountain in the Montana Territory. His followers had been weakened by a long season of hunger and cold, and so Crazy Horse decided to surrender in order to protect them. They were then taken to Fort Robinson in Nebraska, where he was later murdered with a bayonet by a military guard. Crazy Horse was the third of his line to bear his name, which in the Lakota language is Tasunki Witko. He was well known among his people to be a shy and reserved man, and a great visionary. If he had been born in modern times, he would be known as a fighter for social justice. Various witnesses agree that he tried to ensure the safe escape of women and children who found themselves in the way of conflict and that more than once the battles he engaged in began as the result of arriving at encampments that were already under attack. He was one of the most notable participants in the Battle of the Little Big Horn. An Arapaho brave who was a contemporary of his said that he was the bravest man he ever knew. In the view of author Chris Hedges, quote, there are few resistance fighters in American history as noble as Crazy Horse. His ferocity of spirit remains a guiding light for all those who seek lives of defiance. Unquote. His life was commemorated by a monument in the Black Hills of South Dakota, 
begun in 1948 by Polish-American sculptor Korszak Zielkowski, who had also worked on Mount Rushmore. He died at the monument site in 1982 before the work could be completed. The monument remains incomplete to this day. And at 10.10 10 a.m. on January 8, 2011, Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords was shot at point-blank range and critically wounded by lone gunman Jared Lee Loeffler with a 9mm semi-automatic pistol. He proceeded to shoot 19 other people in the attack, six of whom died. He was taken into custody at the scene and was later sentenced to life in prison. Gifford survived the shooting against the odds and spent an extensive amount of time in rehabilitative therapy, gaining back much of her original functionality. She made a triumphant return to the House of Representatives on August 1st of the same year, and by November of that year, with the aid of her husband, she released a memoir. Gabby, a, hope, a story of hope and courage. She also gave a television interview about her experiences and the launch of her book. She was a graduate of Scripps College and Cornell University and was the third woman from the state of Arizona to be elected to the U.S. Congress. She ran as a Democrat. She had previously served in the Arizona House of Representatives and the Arizona State Congress. Her focus on health care reform and illegal immigration made her the recipient of considerable criticism from various conservative groups. She has described herself as a former Republican. In January of 2012, she formally resigned from Congress to concentrate on making a more full recovery from her injuries, but she promised to return to public service in the future. This concludes the first entry in a metaphysician's journal. I wish you peace.